Hi guys, so today we're going to look at changing the subject of a formula. Now this is also known as rearranging formulae, so you might have heard it um, being called that before. Before we get started, I've just got a few key words that I want to just um, recap with you and just make sure that you are fully happy with each of these key words. So the first one I've got is expression. Now an expression is where numbers, letters and operators are grouped together. So for example, you might have something like 5x plus 7, you might have something like 2y minus 5p squared, um, you might have something like 3a plus 2b minus 5j. Those are all examples of expressions. An equation is a bit like an expression, however it's equal to something. So you have got something like um, 5m plus 2 equals 13. You could then rearrange that and solve it. Um, another example of an equation would be something along the lines of 4 lots of 3x minus 1 equals 11. Again, something that we can rearrange and solve. A formula, now this ties in with our title up here. A formula is basically a rule that we can use to work something out. So something that you probably have seen before is if you've got an area which is equal to base times height. Now you use this to work out the area of a rectangle. You've all used this many, many times before. Um, what a formula involves is two or more variables that are equal to something. Another example of a formula is the circumference is equal to pi d, for example. Now the formula. Now an identity is something that is absolutely identical on both sides. Um, so an example of this might be if I've got a quadratic, x squared plus 8x plus 1. If I was to rewrite this and have it exactly the same on the other side, I can show this by giving it an identity symbol, which is three lines instead of two for our equal sign. And in completing the square form, which you are all now familiar with, um, this quadratic is actually identical to this completed the square form. And finally, subject of a formula, which is probably the most important thing for us in this um, lesson today. Um, the subject of a formula is the single variable. And when I say variable, that's the letter that um, it's asking you to have as the subject. is a single variable that everything else in the formula is equal to. So for example, if I have b equals 5x plus 3, the b is the subject of the formula here. If I have got 7m plus 2 is equal to x, the x is the subject of the formula here because it's the single variable that everything else is equal to. Now, if I've got something like 9j equals 3p minus 4, this 9j is technically the subject, yes, but I would want to make the single variable the subject so that's the whole point of this lesson today is how do I make this just j on its own rather than 9j. So I will show you how to do that now. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to do two videos for this. I'm going to do, first video is going to be the more sort of simple examples. And then I'm going to do a second video with some slightly harder examples in there for you. Um, just to break it up, just to make it a little bit easier for you to follow. So the first one. I want you to make B the subject. So if I've got a formula A equals B plus 7, I need to make B the subject. Um, just for quick and ease in these videos, I'm just going to circle the variable that, that I want as the subject rather than me write make B the subject, make Z the subject or whatever it is. So I'm just going to put it in um, the circle just so we know what letter it is. So B is the, what the... Um, variable that I would like to make the subject. So I need to get everything away from the B. So at the moment I've got B plus 7. To get rid of 
the 7, I need to do the inverse, so I need to subtract 7 from both sides. So I'm going to um, get A minus 7 is equal to B. Now to just tidy it up to make it nice and look presentable, I'm then just going to rearrange, like not rearrange it, I'm just going to um, rewrite it to make the subject on the left hand side of the equal sign. So I've got B is equal to A minus 7. I've kept everything the same, I've just switched, switched the sides that it appears on. So for my next example, I'm going to want to make Q the subject. So the formula I am given is P equals 4Q minus 33. So the difference between this example and the one that I've just done is the B here didn't have anything with it, whereas the Q does here. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I need to get rid of the 33 from the 4Q first of all. So the inverse of subtract 33 means I'm going to have to add 33 to both sides. So I get P plus 33 is equal to 4Q. Now to get rid of the 4, I need to divide both sides by 4. How do I do that? How do I divide a P by 4 without a number in front? Now that is difficult, so I'm aware of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write P plus 33, which is what I originally had there, all over 4 is equal to Q. Again, just now I'm going to re write it so that q is on the left hand side and i just write q is equal to p plus 33 all over 4 and for these ones that is literally as simple as it is so let's make x the subject for this one i have got q is equal to 2 lots of x minus 3 i need to expand the brackets first of all so i get 2x minus 6 I then need to do the inverse. I need to get the 6 away from the 2x first of all, because remember it's the x that I want to make the subject. So I need to add 6 to both sides. q plus 6 is equal to 2x. Now to get the 2 away from the x, I need to do the inverse. It's multiplying here, so the inverse is going to be to divide by 2. I need to remember to do it to both sides. And again, just to make it easy, I just do q plus 6 all over 2 is equal to x. And finally, just rewrite it to make x on the left-hand side of my equal sign. Okay, next example, I want to make m the subject. So 4m minus 3 is equal to 8g minus 5. This is my formula this time. So I need to get things away from the M. The first thing I'm going to do is to get rid of this subtract 3 by doing the inverse. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. This side I'm left with 4M. The HG stays the same. Minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2. Now what I need to do is to divide both sides by 4 to make sure I can get the M on its own. So divide both sides by 4, I get m is equal to 8g minus 2 all over 4. Now in this example, you can see that 8, 2 and 4 are all even. So if you really wanted to, now sometimes it, it does ask for it in its simplest form and sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't ask for it in its simplest form, I wouldn't worry about doing this next step. However, if it does... Um, all I can do is I know that all of these numbers can be divided by 2. So m is equal to 4g minus 1 all over 2. This is exactly the same as this and this is exactly the same as this. All I have done here is just simplify by dividing everything by the 2 to make that. Okay, next example I want to make x the subject again. So y is equal to x squared is my formula. To get rid of a squared, the inverse of that is to square root. So I'm going to have the square root of y is equal to x. We know that when we square root, we should put plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus 
square root of y. That was a nice simple one for you. Now I want to make d the subject. So I have got half d minus 8 equals x. So I want to get rid of the 8. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. I'm then left with half d is equal to x plus 8. Now, the reason I wanted to get rid of the 8 first of all, the minus 8 first of all, is because that half is actually multiplying the d. So it's really, really tightly, tightly um, knitted, let's say, to the d. So we just get everything else that's sort of slightly further away from the d first of all. Um, now, how do we get rid of a half? Well, if I, I could um, divide both sides by a half, and that would be absolutely fine. Or... I could just times it by 2. So I get d equals 2 lots of x plus h. Now because I'm multiplying by 2, I've got both these terms here that I need to multiply by 2, which is why I've written it in brackets. Again, it's absolutely acceptable to leave it like this. However, if you wanted to expand the brackets, you can. Please just watch out though, because it's very, very easy to make a mistake from this line to this line if you don't expand out the brackets properly so I would probably suggest that you keep it in this format rather than expanding it but if you do expand it you expand it correctly it's absolutely fine and you still get it correct okay my next one um, I want to make R the subject c equals 2 pi r now I've included this one because pi looks like it could be a variable here but actually remember when you type it into your calculator it's just a number 3.1 blah 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 whatever it comes out at and therefore um, we do treat it as a number and so to make all the subject I want to get rid of this number remember pi is just a number it's a symbol yes but it is just a number so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi again hard to do so I'm just going to leave it as c over 2 pi is equal to r just rewrite it so r is on the left hand side and that's it a few more examples just to give you um, an idea of all of them you might want to go back and um, have a little watch of this video again maybe slow it down if, you're, if I've gone a little bit too quickly for you um, but I've got lots of examples just to try and help you get a variety of different styles that they may ask. So this time I want to make A the subject. My formula is 3 brackets 5A plus B is equal to 7B. Um, expand my brackets out first of all. So 15A plus 3B is equal to 7B. I'm going to get rid of the 3B. So I'm going to subtract 3B from both sides. I then get 15a is equal to 4b and then to make a the subject I need to get rid of the 15 so divide both sides by 15 I'm then left with a is equal to 4b all over 15. Next example I want to make y the subject my formula is z is equal to the square root of xy how do I get rid of a square root? Well, I'm just going to square both sides. So I get z squared is equal to xy. To make y the subject, I need to get rid of the x. The x is currently multiplying to the y. So I'm going to divide both sides by x. So I get z squared over x is equal to y. Again, I'm just going to rewrite this so that the y is on the left-hand side of the equal sign keeping everything else the same. Okie dokie. Um, what else have I got for you? Let's go and make A the subject of V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So this one is a little bit more complicated. The A is involved with the 2 and the S here, whereas this U squared is on its own. So I'm going to get rid of that first of all. So minus U squared from both sides. I know to subtract it because this is not negative, it's positive because there's not a negative sign here. So that's how I know it's positive, so I can just take it away. I get V squared is, uh, sorry, not equal to, 
v squared minus u squared is equal to 2as. Now, to get the a on its own, if I divide by 2s, that's going to leave the a on its own. So, I divide by 2s on both sides. Sorry. That's not really good. Divide by 2s on both sides. I'm left with v squared minus u squared all over 2s is equal to a. Again, just rewriting it, a is equal to v squared minus u squared all over 2s. Three more examples for you. A the subject again using the formula v equals u plus at. Very, very similar to the one that I've just done. Subtract the u from both sides. So I get v minus u equals at. And then because this is multiplying and I want to keep the a as the subject, I'm going to divide both sides by t. So I get v minus u all over t is equal to a. a is equal to v minus u all over t. For my next example, I would like v to be the subject. t equals a half m v squared. Now there is a lot going on here. I've got a half times by m times by v squared. I want to make v the subject. So this is where it's starting to get a bit harder. First of all, I'm going to get rid of this half. And the easiest way to get rid of a half is to multiply both sides by 2. So I get 2t is equal to mv squared. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of the m. And to get rid of the m, I'm going to divide both sides by m. That then leaves me with 2t over m is equal to v squared. And then now to get rid of my squared, I need to square root both sides. So I'm left with plus or minus the square root of 2t over m is equal, sorry, is equal to v. And then just to rewrite it with v on the left hand side, v equals plus or minus the square root of 2t over m. My final example for you, and I'm making m the subject. So I've got four brackets, 2m plus 3g is equal to 19g plus 3. I'm going to expand my brackets out, so I get 8m plus 12g is equal to 19g plus 3. This side hasn't changed at all. I'm going to, I want to keep m as the subject, so I'm going to get rid of the 12g by doing the inverse, subtract, subtract sorry, 12g from both sides. So I get 8m equals 7g plus 3. And now divide, divide both sides by 8. I get m is equal to 7g plus 3, all over 8. Now I know I have gone very, very quickly through all of those examples, and there were lots of examples to go through. Um, you might want to go back and have a little look um, to try and help you work your way through some of those. Just remember, you need to get everything away from the value that you are trying to make the subject. So start with the things that are furthest away as such. So like here, I got rid of the 12G because the 8 is a lot closer, is a lot tighter connection with the M than the 12, 12G does. And that is our simple rearranging the subject of a formula.